Hey everybody, I'm Tim, and today, it's just a great day. I think we should all be celebrating, and I'm gonna tell you why. And you're watching Cigars Daily. Help us future-proof Cigars Daily from an uncertain future of censorship on the internet when you watch these videos on CigarsDailyPlus.com where you can find extra content in videos and coupon codes and a lot more. Also, for this video, I'm smoking the brand spanking new West Tampa Black, blended by Rick Rodriguez. He just branched out on his own and these rich, flavorful cigars just started hitting the shelves of cigar shops across America. It's actually a reason I wanted to smoke this today and take you guys through what's going on. This is the beginning of one of the biggest movements for cigars in the last hundred years, definitely in any of our lifetimes. So let me take you through why it's time to light up something a little special. Earlier this week, I was so excited to post our video on how cigars helped win the Revolutionary War. It's an amazing time during the 1700s when tobacco was an integral part of America's society and economy. It helped win the war because we were able to secure loans from the French to help win that war by paying with tobacco as collateral. It's an amazing time but certainly so different from the world we live in today, where any kind of tobacco leaf is treated with extreme prejudice at every level. Like people treat it like it's the devil, Ricky Bobby. It's the kind of thing that if you love premium cigars, you sort of got to contend with. And the FDA has been going after it big time. If you guys have been in cigars for a while, and especially if you've followed this channel, I've done several videos on how the FDA has been trying to stack up regulations for premium cigars. But today we have got one of the best and most promising moves in favor of the right and freedom for the cigar industry to do what we love. And that's what I want to take you guys through today. It's a huge win, certainly the biggest win in my lifetime and almost definitely the biggest win for a hundred or more years for premium cigars. So light up something good, pull up a chair, and let me take you through what's happening and why it's a great thing. It's actually why I'm smoking this West Tampa cigar today, because this is brand new on the market. And if the FDA had their way, this thing would have never hit shelves in cigar shops anywhere. It's actually something that came up a few years ago in 2016, when the FDA announced all the regulations they wanted to put on premium cigars. And those regulations were really, by and large, many of the same ones that they put on cigarettes, which I think at a first glance for most people are like, Cigarettes, cigars, tobacco products. Sure, why wouldn't that work? But there's actually a huge separation, a massive difference between the two that's becoming more and more apparent every single day. And it's the thing that actually cost the FDA their day in court very recently. What happened was the FDA said they wanted to do certain things. One of those things was like testing of cigars and the tobacco and the amount of nicotine that was in them. They wanted to put down regulations that required every brand to produce testing and like submit all of the cigars information for approval by the FDA. The problem is, and here's the big separation, some of these tests, some of these regulations could be up to hundreds of thousands of dollars per cigar just to keep something on the market that's already been there. Now, if you talk about that in terms of cigarette money, well, by gosh, cigarette companies will pay the money to have the tests done to fulfill the regulations so they can sell more cigarettes. But when it comes to cigars, there's just not enough meat on the bones to do anything like that and even stay in business. The same regulations put on cigarettes would crush the artisan, family-owned and operated industry of premium cigars in America. In fact, if you wanna talk about doing a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of testing to keep a cigar out there, there may be a couple of companies out there that could even consider doing that. Most of them would have to just fold up shop. And of course, this was just one regulation in a list of them, a bunch of them. But the cigar industry went to task. The Cigar Rights of America and the Premium Cigar Association and the Cigar Association of America have all filed lawsuits against the FDA in this very case, saying that cigars weren't being treated fairly, which is something that legitimately, personally, I didn't think would ever matter. I didn't think that anybody would ever take a look at the cigar industry and say, 
let's hear your plight. Let's care about your voice. Let's care about your rights. seems like there's always groups of people out there that are okay to just kind of sweep under the rug and not care about. When I was growing up, that group of people was called Canadians. The one group of people you could always make fun of these days. Uh, and there's some Canadians that quite frankly seem a lot more badass than the Americans. And I digress though. When it comes back to this issue of premium cigars, the industry filed a lawsuit against the FDA saying that a lot of these regulations weren't fair, that they weren't just. And now it seems like a judge is seeing that. To keep this in the simplest terms that I can for what is actually a pretty complicated legal situation, this all comes from the fact that the FDA has been given express authority to regulate tobacco products. It's something that Congress told them they could do, and that's why they do it. However, there's also some procedures they have to follow. And those procedures come from what's called the Administrative Procedures Act. Unfortunately, as they went through these procedures, they, they kind of skirted some of them. They kind of swept some things under the rug and outright ignored other things. In fact, the judge in this case of the cigar industry versus the FDA said that the FDA did not properly adhere to the requirements of the Administrative Procedures Act by simply ignoring the fact that there was data about premium cigar usage. You see, in order for the FDA to say, we're gonna regulate cigars by, here's an example, putting giant warning labels on boxes. We wanna put warning labels on boxes. Well, they have to look at the data and see if the data out there suggests that that is something that would actually help their cause. If the FDA wants to reduce smoking, they have to be able to produce prove that massive warning labels on boxes are gonna lower overall smoking by some certain percentage. In this case, they didn't do that. They actually even went on. And in an important commenting period where you know people and, and cigar industry officials, even anti-tobacco groups are supposed to be allowed to give information to the FDA about this case, the FDA actually willfully ignored some of it. The judge says, in the end, instead of addressing relevant data before it, the agency resorted to a common refrain to obscure the issue. Just means that when the FDA got important data on premium cigars, specifically how they're different from cigarettes, they chose not to look at that data. And here's the data difference. Premium cigars are different than cigarettes in a few ways. Cigarette smokers smoke multiple cigarettes or a pack a day, while a cigar smoker on average will smoke a couple of cigars a week. That's substantially less usage than a cigarette smoker. Also, premium cigars are enjoyed by, by tasting the smoke without inhaling the smoke into your lungs by most people, while cigarettes really aren't enjoyed by people at all unless they're inhaling them. These are things that were brought to the FDA to say, hey, take a look at these, and they were things that were willfully ignored. The judges realized this, and it doesn't seem to be a good thing. And then of course, there's the big reason we regulate tobacco. It's for the children. We do this for the children. And arguably at one point with cigarettes, which was a massive problem today, probably not as much an issue with cigarettes as it is with vaping. But when it comes to the information on premium cigar usage, what you pick up at a local cigar shop, not at a gas station, the numbers were kind of misrepresented for youth smoking. In fact, the judge said that another claim the FDA made was not properly interpreted. The FDA cited, cited a study and found that youth ages 12 to 17 who said that they smoke cigars was 3.8%. And they identified 3.8% of youth were identifying as premium cigar smokers. However, the issue is that 3.3% of the 12 to 17 year olds who were surveyed said they smoke cigars. And so the real number here is actually, and get this, this one's kind of a mind bender, 3.8% of 3.3%. The actual number when it comes to this youth issue is 0.1%, a much smaller number than what was trying to be passed off as sort of the like youth smoking liability when it comes to premium cigars. This was an absolutely huge one. As I said, this is the reason we do so much of this regulation. They all skate on this. It's for the children. And certainly we want to keep our children safe. And I don't think there's a lot of cigar smokers out there who are like, yeah, I'm going to pull my son up for a cigar before he's 
old enough, I think a lot of people out there have responsible looks and views on premium cigars. In fact, I'll tell you this, the average age that someone gets into premium cigars, it's around like 27, which is also remarkably different than when people start smoking cigarettes. Okay, so the FDA has sort of stepped in it now and a judge has come out and said, this is not okay. And what you're doing to this cigar industry, that's not gonna be okay either. So we gotta do something else. So where do we stand and where are we going? The exciting thing is that the judge said, if he just vacated the FDA's like proposed regulations on premium cigars, he could be done with the thing much faster. Although at this point, it looks like what's going to happen is he's going to encourage the premium cigar industry and the FDA to work together to figure out some sort of solution in the midst of all of this. It's something that sounds Sounds convoluted, complicated, difficult, and like it doesn't really seem to have a solution, but that does seem to be the direction that they're going. If the judge does decide to vacate the, the FDA's regulation of cigars, it does mean the FDA would be back to square one, back to the drawing board on all cigar regulations in America. It would be an amazing thing. They would have to start all over if they wanted to put anything in place. And I'll give you guys a little insider look at this. The FDA has already said, Premium cigars are their lowest tobacco priority right now and going forward for at least a while. They are really focused on the larger issues, like I already mentioned, the youth vaping epidemic, as they call it. Cigarettes are still a substantial issue among youth, and premium cigars don't really appeal to a lot of youngsters. And so it seems like a good thing going forward, but it's also not set in stone yet. In fact, a lot of the FDA's regulations are still in place. Like cigar companies cannot donate cigars to soldiers. We're also not allowed to give away free samples unless they're associated with a purchase that's already been made. Like you can go buy five cigars and get one free, but you can't like go into a store and a rep just hand you a cigar, totally against the law. There are other things they've set out too. So right now, some regulations are in place. Certainly not all of them are in place. And I'll tell you guys this. The biggest one is the one that they call substantial equivalence. That means, or that the registration process for the FDA. They wanted to say that any cigar that came out after February of 2007 had to undergo this testing in order to stay on the market. That's the really expensive testing I was talking about earlier. At this point, a company like West Tampa Tobacco Company, they would never be able to hit the shelves anywhere. I mean, you're talking about millions of dollars just to get the business started, just to get like the regulation out of the way, get the product made, get it on the shelf. You'd have no conceivable way to make your money back at any point by doing it the way the FDA wanted to do it. At this point, it doesn't look like that is going to be rolling out, at least not now, maybe not at any time soon, and possibly never, which means that cigar companies will get to continue to craft new and exciting blends and put them on the market, like West Tampa. By the way, this is blended by Rick Rodriguez, who used to blend for C. CAO cigars and has been trained by some of the greatest blenders the world over. This dude knows his stuff and I'm so excited about his new brand and even more excited that it looks like he's going to get to be around for a very long time. Now, certainly this doesn't mean that the cigar industry is out of the water yet. When it comes to FDA regulation, I got to tell you guys, this is just one part of of the very big, very scary picture that cigar industry people get to see all the time. Because while the FDA may not be able to regulate us, that wouldn't stop Congress from passing a bill that taxes us to death. That wouldn't stop the internet from putting out regulations that make it impossible to tell a single person about your services and products, which, by the way, is something Cigars Daily faces every day. Or even scarier yet, outlawing the idea of even being able to buy a cigar online so that you lose more than half of the industry's ability to supply their people. It's like 60% of cigars are bought online right now. Imagine what it would do to an industry if you wiped out 60% of the capacity to supply. You, it would, well, it would look like a lot of America right now that doesn't have the stuff that they need. So in any case, so this is all very exciting news, guys. Like, and I think anybody who works in the cigar industry or uh, enjoys cigars at home on their own has a reason to be very, very excited. Sometimes it seems like our rights are just gonna be completely smushed from in front of us. But at the same time, these things tend to happen where you get massive wins in courts, even if they're one ones that you never, ever expected. And this is one that I never expected. 
I fully thought that the FDA would just be regulating us until we died from it. <laughs> anyway, I want to ask you guys, what have you heard about this? What are you excited about? What do you hope happens in the future? Please drop a comment down below and let everybody know. I want to have the conversation more with you guys down there and check this video out on CigarsDailyPlus.com. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Tim signing off for Cigars Daily and I will see you in the comments.